everyone and welcome to the Unisys ClearPath webinar series. Today's topic, Business Information Server Release 48R1 for OS 2200. Let's get started. Our speakers today are Thanga Panusami, Product Manager for Unisys, and Dave Yost, OS 2200 Biz Engineering Manager for Unisys. And with that, Thanga, the audience is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matt. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, session. Um, <clears throat> so with that, uh, I'll just kick start with the agenda that we have for uh, the today's session. So, uh, you know, we are all very excited about the new busy release that's happening. Uh, and we hope to share uh, some of this excitement and we want to share the new features uh, that's getting uh, coming as part of this release. Uh, and even before we get on to the new features, uh, I just want to highlight about some of the challenges that this product has been addressing, uh, the key value proposition, and what are the recent significant business features that we have added over the last several years. And we also talk about some of the references uh, in some of and the ways the customers are using a product, uh, so that uh, you know it, it adds additional perspective uh, in terms of the business usage. Uh, my colleague Dave uh, will be providing a detailed update on the new features uh, for the 48 R1 uh, release, uh, and then we'll towards then we'll also uh, share some of the white papers, uh, which we hope will find it very helpful, uh, and also some of the business videos that we do have. So, with that, I'll get started. Uh, uh, for this presentation. So, uh, this has been in the market uh, for more than four decades out there, and uh, our customers have built uh, truly mission critical applications, particularly the bills on the clear path uh, environment. Uh, so, we've been delivering excellence for more than four decades. Uh, so, if this slide tries to capture uh, some of the business challenges that uh, you know this has been solving uh, over the last few decades. Uh, <clears throat> so typically, our customers ask, you know, uh, say that you know they're not able to find uh, uh, all the necessary answers in the predefined reports. Uh, so that is where this typically comes and helps them out. So that is one of the challenge addressed uh, by this. And also, customers always have this uh, challenge that you know they do not find all the necessary data uh, in a single system. Of course, the data is in a today's distributed uh, environment. Uh, the data is distributed uh, everywhere. So there's a real need to pull out data from multiple systems uh, and get a coherent view and make meaningful information out of that. And of course, our users also don't use the data in a very uh, static way. You know, customers uh, and our users want to play with that data. They want to do various kinds of computations. They want to do compare and replace numeric data, character strings, dates, uh, times, uh, in the report data. Uh, they may also want to do some com uh, you know, uh, complex sort, uh, you know, across multiple fields. Uh, they may want to sort, sort and replace data. And it could also, you know, the comparisons could be happening across reports. You know, they may want to match data across multiple reports. So really, you know, the customers want to get the data alive. So how do I get the data alive? You know, that goes beyond the predefined uh, data reports. And how can I connect to data in multiple uh, databases and, you know, make meaningful information? So these are some of the challenges that uh, the BIS product addresses. Uh, and also, you know, how do we reduce the overall uh, TCO in the product. In today's environment, uh, the products are so specialized that for customer to put together uh, you know, a solution, they have to integrate so many different products, uh, which basically increases the overall total cost of ownership, and it also increases the complexity to get the solution itself to work. So again, this kind of makes all these things uh, uh, to be done in a much more simpler way. And of course, how can I have an increased uh, developer productivity as well? Uh, so these are some of the challenges addressed. I'll, in the next slide, I'll talk about you know, what is the value proposition and how we address uh, some of these challenges. So this uh, is a very versatile tool. Uh, it brings in so many uh, different uh, kinds of capabilities uh, for the end user and developers. Uh, first, I would like to start with some of the power functions uh, that the BIS uh, provides. 
we have a, uh, functions like uh, totalize, calculate, search, sort and match which are really uh, very very helpful for an end user who wants to play the data with uh, and you know typically helping them uh, to take decision with the meaningful information after the analysis of data. And this of course also provides excellent data integration and aggregation capabilities. Uh, this is able to uh, connect to multiple uh, databases. It can have a multi range of clients and destinations. It can connect external databases like MS SQL Server, Oracle, uh, external data managers such as OLEDB, ODBC, ADO.NET uh, and other databases as well. So that's the other part of uh, this. You can really get data from so many different sources, get them all into the biz and then I can use the biz power functions and other uh, capabilities in this to uh, make meaningful uh, uh, information from the data. And in addition to the decision support, this also provides a rapid application development environment. Uh, in addition, uh, this has always been our customers use the uh, powerful BIS scripting language uh, over the last few uh, decades and have built really mission critical applications with them. And in addition to the uh, uh, native script, we also have the BIS JavaScript development as well. Uh, it, it again provides for the uh, younger developers for getting started on the BIS apps development. JavaScript provides a very good uh, opportunity to do that. And then we also have the BIS resource adapter so that uh, BIS can participate in an SOA uh, kind of environment. In, in today's world, interoperability is a very key aspect and resource adapters help interoperability, interoperability with respect to Java applications and in the SOA kind of environments. And we do have the developer workshop which is a very intuitive uh, uh, development tool uh, in which customers can use to develop both the uh, native script and the JavaScript uh, based applications and it also provides an excellent uh, way to debug the these applications as well. And in addition to the development environment, uh, this also provides a runtime environment for the native uh, biz apps and for the JavaScript based apps as well. And then it also provides the admin tools uh, such as the map admin on the OS 2200 environment uh, and open this uh, and of course on the enterprise manager on the OS 2200 environment. And in addition to the decision support and rapid application development environment, this also provides the integrated uh, database as well. So with the integrated database, uh, again, it makes the customers uh, it easy because it's a database that is integrated as part of the product, which is very easy to use. Uh, as we all do know that you know the data databases arranged in the concept of uh, the analogy of uh, the cabinets and drawers. Uh, so for a end user it is really easy to use without uh, need, need to know complex SQL commands. And of course this is also highly integrated with the BIS functionality which kind of uh, such as the uh, BIS manual for, uh, commands and stuff like that. So it really gives a high performance uh, for the uh, users. So to highlight it, you know, this is a versatile tool. It provides vision support capabilities, rapid application development, and uh, uh, rapid application development uh, environment, and an integrated database. So, the real value prop is that you know customers can quickly develop applications to do a wide range of uh, uh, capabilities using a single product. With that, I'll move on to my next slide. Uh, I would like to highlight some of the recent significant features that we have added uh, in the product. Uh, this continues to keep up with the market uh, and customers expectations and we are continuing to evolve the product. So over the last several years we have added capabilities in the business JavaScript uh, and we have added uh, of course the business resource adapter as well uh, to participate in SOA kind of environment. The developer workshop is continuously enhanced uh, release on release so that it is more intuitive, it is more helpful for our customers to develop and debug applications and as part of this release also we have some uh, enhancements uh, done, which uh, they will be highlighting uh, the later part of this session. And we continue to enhance along the decision support capabilities as well. Uh, we have some uh, new graphics engine, uh, and as you all know, that you know this uh, provides some very good graphing uh, and charting capabilities, uh, and that is also we are trying to see you know how this can be uh, enhanced and be made more uh, appealing uh, to the end user. And we continue to integrate with some of the popular databases in the industry. Uh, we have uh, the integration with MySQL and Postgres has been done. And in addition to the databases, 
we also know that uh, WebSphere MP is one of the popular tools in the market which uh, tries to connect to various other systems. Uh, so uh, MP integration also provides another opportunity for connecting biz uh, uh, with other uh, systems. Uh, and we also have support for the ADO uh, .NET interfaces uh, for customers who prefer the .NET framework. And as you all do know that uh, security is one of the key elements uh, for us in the ClearPath environment and in the biz environment. Uh, so we are always trying to see how we can enhance the security in the product as well. Uh, so we have some sign-on authentication which leverages the underlying platform's uh, authentication preferences. Uh, and there has been a data address encryption which provides an additional layer of uh, security uh, preventing uh, casual browsers uh, accessing the data. So I would like to highlight that you know this remains strategic to Unisys. This has all been one of the key products in the Unisys portfolio for the last four decades and it continues to remain strategic to Unisys. And it is being used by our customers worldwide. Uh, it is used across all regions uh, and uh, because of the versatility in the product, customers uh, have various benefits and uh, different kinds of applications uh, built using the BIS uh, software. And this continues to evolve uh, innovatively supporting our clients' uh, business uh, worldwide. Uh, with that, I'll move to my next slide. Uh, so this on ClearPath uh, truly delivers a mission critical uh, environment. ClearPath has always been known for its mission, uh, mission critical attributes and this kind of truly helps satisfy that experience uh, on a ClearPath environment. It is very highly reliable, it is able to support high volume transactions, it is able to provide the data integrity, uh, the security needed and the high availability of course. The summary, so it's a truly mission critical uh, uh, product, uh, particularly on our ClearPath environment. Uh, and we have customers using this worldwide. And again, this is a product that is used across industries. And here is listed some of them, you know, some of the popular industries where uh, this is very commonly used. So we are having it used with the banking and the uh, insurance industry. Uh, so particularly the insurance, you know, we have applications like you know real-time access to the policy holders and agents who want to know policy, uh, you know, quotations or you know somebody who wants to do a bill payment, and then it is very popular in the transportation sector as well. There are applications built with cruise reservations, cargo systems, and of course in the public sector also it's very uh, widely used. Uh, for some of our customers, use it for you know Medicaid. Uh, related processing, the benefits related processing, eligibility determination, uh, case management, uh, and of course some of the music for electoral application as well. I'll be talking about uh, a few references uh, in the next few slides as well. So of course yeah, it is used in the retail, telecom and other industries as well. I could keep uh, talking for a very long time, but the summary is that yeah, it's a truly mission critical product used across multiple industries worldwide. And uh, owing to its mission critical attributes, many BIS ClearPath customers uh, you know, measure the time between the outages in years, both planned and unplanned. So I'll quickly uh, walk through some of our, one of our reference that we have with uh, Roma Capital. Uh, so in this case, the customer, the challenge that they had was they wanted to modernize the core application and enable real-time monitoring of the electoral data. So uh, this again uh, was one of the key uh, product as part of the solution along with the internet commerce enabler component uh, which basically helps in the web enabling of the biz apps. Uh, and of course it was used on the ClearPath uh, server technology. So some of the results that the uh, customer achieved was that they were able to manage more than 2 million OTOs and uh, they connected the electoral application with 499 laptops and 85 workstations. Uh, again, this kind of illustrates the kind of the mission critical nature of this uh, running on the clear path. And in this case, uh, an iPad application was also well developed uh, for real time monitoring and publishing of the electoral data. And another benefit was that you know it achieved significant cost saving uh, with paperless transactions between the citizens and the government agencies. With that I'll move on to my next slide. Um, while we always talk about external references, uh, for great products, it's not just used externally, it is used 
internally as well. So in this case, I'm also going to talk about one of the success stories with this that is used internally inside UNSS. Uh, we don't just, uh, we tell to our customers what we internally build and what we believe in. And uh, UNSS global logistics system uh, is such an example out here. So UNSS needed a global system that supports the functions of a fully integrated global uh, supply chain. Uh, and as you do know, as any integrated global supp supply chain, it needs a number of functionality uh, that goes as part of it. Speed, some of them is like service parts inventory management, repairable parts tracking, warehouse functions, automated transportation decision maker uh, for, you know, for the next day orders and stuff like that. So there's a lot more functionality as part of that. Again, this was traditionally built using the BIS software and again, they wanted to modernize it. And again, ICE was used as one of the key components as part of the uh, modernization here. And uh, here again, I want to highlight uh, some of the service part volumes uh, that we have, uh, which is like, uh, you know, 3.15 million pieces used annually, 1.4 uh, million pieces shipped annually, and about 17 million of units owned inventory. And again, with respect to the parts distribution centers uh, in uh, 306 cities worldwide and uh, 465 stocking sites across the globe. Again, another example of you know this running in a truly uh, mission critical environment, uh, satisfying uh, the business users' needs. So I just want to give a glimpse of the uh, 48 R1 release. Uh, so we have a total of 52 new features as part of the 48 R1 release. Uh, 22 of them are generated by customers. They come from you. Uh, so nearly 42% of the new features are based on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, new feature suggestions from our uh, customers. Uh, so we hope, you know, uh, these features uh, will continue to increase your uh, productivity as you continue to enhance uh, and leverage the business applications. Uh, the BIS 48 R1 is supported on Clearpath OS 2200 uh, release 13 and higher. And uh, some of the BIS 48 R1 package components, once you place an order for the release, the components that you would be getting is the Clearpath uh, BIS 48 R1 software. And in addition to that, there are separately installable features. We have the tape recovery and maintenance, uh, the tram, and then we have the MRI software as well. And then uh, the mapper OLTP for uh, 2200 the Java script subsystem, uh, the Biz API, the Biz resource adapter, uh, enterprise manager, developer workshop, and the GI Biz, which is a graphical interface uh, for Biz. So those are the package components that get uh, bundled as part of the 48R1 release. So I would like to highlight uh, some of the uh, at a high level, some of the new features that's being delivered, uh, Dave will be providing a much more detailed update uh, uh, in the next section. So basically, I want to highlight that you know the 48R1 delivers an increased performance and productivity for users and developers, uh, and hope uh, you you will see the benefits uh, when you deploy the new release. And from an increased performance standpoint, the calculate function has been optimized and it delivers an increased performance, particularly for complex uh, calculations and large data being processed. And then the maximum, there has been an increase uh, in the number of maximum reports in a drawer. Uh, we can have up to 10,000 reports in a drawer. The earlier limit was 5,000. And then there has been increased, uh, there have been features with respect to increased productivity as well. Uh, we have increased digit precision with a date function. There have been new options with the add, match, and search function. Uh, again, they will be talking about it in more detail. And then we are not just looking at the native script. We're also seeing how, you know, uh, Angular developer can, you know, start using this JavaScript more productively. So there has been enhancements there as well. Uh, and we are uh, having new functionality as per the ECMAScript uh, 5.1 standard. Uh, there have been de developer workshop enhancements as well. Again, we are always trying to think how can it be more intuitive and more easy to use. And we have features such as the code assistance feature. And as I highlighted earlier, security is one of the key elements for us. So there have been some security elements, uh, security enhancements as well with the use of correlation tables to map the network user uh, and the uh, this user.
So yeah, there has been an increased, uh, the new feature delivers increased performance and increased productivity and enhanced security. So I would like to uh, give a glimpse of the software release plan uh, that we are looking at. Uh, I would like to highlight that the BIS 46 R1 uh, has an end of uh, engineering support on Jan 31st, 2014. Uh, so if any of you are on this 46 R1, uh, we kindly request you to you know, migrate uh, to the latest version of the this software. Uh, do reach out to us for any support that you need. Uh, reach out to your account team, reach out to us. Uh, and as the BIS 48 R1 is expected on Jan 27th, 2014, uh, the BIS 48 R1. Uh, and uh, the BIS 47 R1 will be continued to be supported. At this point, we have not uh, identified on any decommitment date. It will be continued to be supported. Uh, and again, 49 R1, the future release, uh, there are some tentative dates shown for that. Again, the future dates are uh, subject to change. Uh, with that, I would like to hand over uh, to my colleague Dave, who will provide a detailed update uh, on this new release features. Dave, over to you. Well, thank you, Thanga. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Today's broadcast will give you an update on the current status of the Biz product for OS 2200, and we'll also take a look into the future. Here's today's agenda. I'll talk about enhancements to several existing functions and options, including date processing and Java dataset handling. The calculate function has been rewritten to perform much faster. With Biz 48R1, you'll see phase one of some major performance improvements. There's a new release of developer workshop with many new useful features. And finally, I'll discuss future plans for the Biz product. First, let's look at existing biz functions. For the add-on, add-to, and add functions, we've implemented new options that let you keep the issuing report headers, add a specific number of lines to the end of the report, or exclude a specific line type. For the date function, we've added the T2 option, allowing greater precision when converting a time to a floating point number. The G option for search and match lets you specify the line types to be included in the result. This is the opposite of the L option that uh, we've had for a long time. Previously, the sort R function did not ask for the right password pri prior to displaying the mask. If there was a right password, it would error off. This has been corrected. You'll see JavaScript enhancements in both Biz 48 and Biz 12. Various JavaScript data set methods are enhanced to support such features as matching columns by date specification, calculating end of month, a new date $21 format, and processing bulk updates for temporary data sets. We've added return values to the resumable data set methods to simplify loop construction and simplified the argument structures for several methods. Under the ECMAScript 5.1 standard, there are new methods added to the array, and date, and string classes. Several non-standard CLive methods that effectively duplicated ECMA functionality have been deprecated and or removed. Staying with JavaScript, the developer workshop code assistance for JavaScript has been made more efficient and more reliable. It's more efficient because it can be dynamically enabled via keyboard hotkeys so it's only on when you need assistance, not for everything being typed. It's more reliable because pop-up dialogs are now displayed so you can verify you are getting assistance for the right object. Because the built-in code assistance logic may not be able to determine what object you want assistance for, or it may determine the wrong object, we now display a pop-up list box so you can easily confirm or change what object you want assistance for. Now let's talk about improved performance. We've rewritten the calculate function to significantly enhance its performance. The new version of Cal will now tokenize equations so they don't have to be reinterpreted for each line of code. The gain in performance for this feature is most easily seen when processing larger data reports or as the calculations become more complex. On reports of 1,000 lines or more, we've seen a 50% savings. 
With 48R1, we're implementing the first phase of a major performance enhancement. Several infrastructure areas are required to be changed, and you will see these changes in 48R1. I'll describe these changes in more detail on the following slides. The report indexes have been redesigned, leading to fewer and smaller index file IOs. You will need to do a long recovery on your first initialization when going to 48, and probably in 49 as well. Starting in 48R1, Turbo is always on. Your I.O. counts will be different due to the performance changing and from having Turbo on as a default. There are no changes to the history files or secure tapes. You will need to configure values for the IPOS and UPOS mapper parameters, and you, and you must, must have, have index files, files and mupper files set up. These files have totally new formats in level 48R1. We've made several enhancements in the administration area, too. The two main ones I want to highlight are the increase in reports contained in a drawer and security. We will now allow up to 10,000 reports in a drawer, including the zero report. This limit could be raised higher in a future release if someone requires it, but right now, RID dollar only produces a four-digit value. On the security side, we've implemented a correlation table in order to eliminate the need for each biz user to have a demand sign-on. This table is a biz report that will correlate one domain sign-on to one biz sign-on. You no longer need an OS 2200 demand sign-on. There's a new release of the developer workshop with many new features. We've made enhancements to the editor, the debugger, and other parts of the workshop. You can open a script or report in edit mode if you have write access. Or you can toggle between edit and view modes using the edit mode menu on the status bar at the bottom of the main workshop window. A script's existing label table will be automatically rebuilt when you save the script. For those of us who prefer a keyboard to the mouse, you can now turn on the code assistance feature for both JavaScript and BizScript using shortcut keys. Okay. Now let's talk about debugging. Now we all know that the best debugging technique available is to simply write the code correctly the first time. Now for times when that doesn't seem to be feasible, here are some new debugger features. The autos window displays the variables associated with the current and previous execution. This lets you easily keep track of which variables are changing. Autos variable values can be changed when in debug mode. You can now switch the context of the call stack to a different call stack level so you can view variables and results from the selected call stack level. Watches can be added directly to the watches window. You can change the name of a watch, and you can change its value when in debug mode. There's also an option to change the language of a watch. Working with JavaScript, you can view open data sets as well as the final return data set. The new workshop now allows you to change the contents of a variable during a debug session. You can add multiple reports or scripts to a project all at once. If a data report contains an image, the Data Report Properties window displays a preview of the image along with all the other report properties. The workshop can automatically check for a new IC or minor release. When an update is available, you can download the update and install it the next time you start the workshop. Now let's talk about the schedule for the upcoming biz releases. And to reiterate uh, what Thanga said, th these are, this is the plan today. It may change tomorrow, may change next week, so uh, <coughs> keep that in mind, please. Here are a few of the milestones we accomplished with this 48R1. A big one occurred in September when we started beta test. 
but the true milestone was achieved this month with the announcement of general customer availability. So where is Biz going in the future? And again, this is the plan today. It's subject to change, but this is the plan as we see it today. We're starting to look into what we should provide in Biz 49 and 13. That means we will plan both releases at the same time and attempt to release the same functionality at the same time. While both systems are still trying to be 100% compatible, that requires a little catch-up work for both products. There are new features we are planning to implement in both products. Putting together a new release requires us to develop lists of features that need to be implemented. They come in several categories. Catch-up, implemented on one platform but not the other. New feature suggestions, gathered from you, the customers. Marketing, things marketing believes we need to do. And engineering, the things engineering wants to do. Those are all gathered up and put into a requirements document that is sent out for approval. Once the requirements are approved, the various work items are assigned to programmers for implementation. Their first step is to develop a high-level feature specification describing the feature. A project plan is put together that includes delivery to system test, the beta program, test estimates, and finally, a projected release date. We're starting to plan the context of BIS 49R1 and BIS 13. In BIS 49, we'll continue the performance enhancements that we started in BIS 48. We're also migrating the colors run to OS 2200. This run lets you configure the color schemes for data display by GI Biz. In Biz 13, you'll see the regen capability that now exists on OS 2200. This lets a site change the size of an existing drawer in place without disturbing the data. SSL for the Biz resource adapter on the Linux platform is another new feature. Both platforms will see a new iPad interface to Biz, a modern graphical look and feel on many system runs and the incorporation of many new feature suggestions. The Biz release database is being modernized. As fondly as we all remember the 1980s, you'll see updated dates in the demonstration database. We're going to put a new graphical interface on as many of the release scripts as possible. For example, RDI and many administration scripts are being modernized. Currently, a new intern programmer has begun work on the OS 2200 utilities. Here's an example screen from the classic look and feel version of the RDI run. Those of you who have used RDI will recognize this menu. We're currently putting a GUI face on RDI. The equivalent new interface for RDI will look like this. Here you see a screen from a prototype of the graphical RDI run. This is the same menu as you had before, but now it has a more modern look and feel. Here's another shot of the classic RDI run. You can see on the top line that there was an error when it was executed. And here's the corresponding screen from the prototype of the new graphical RDI run. This is the same screen and functionality as the previous version, but now much more modern looking. And the error text now appears in a message box instead of on the top line. Same thing with the alarm run. Here's the classic screen with calendars on the screen and an input message area. And here's the graphical version. Again, it's the same functionality, but in a GUI look and feel. You can select the date in the calendar, and then enter a message and the other various parameters. One last comment on this modernization we're doing. It requires a GI Biz terminal. The attachment terminal will not work with these new screens, but will still display the classic versions. In summary, there are a total of 52 new features in this release. We've made enhancements to several existing functions and options, including date processing and JavaScript dataset handling. The calculate function has been rewritten to perform much faster. 
With Biz 48R1, you'll see phase one of some major performance improvements. There's a new release of Developer Workshop with many new and useful features. In the future, look for Biz to maintain compatibility between platforms. And we're modernizing the Biz release database. Now I'll turn it back to Thanga. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave, uh, for the detailed update. Uh, I'm f hoping this update was very useful, and I'm hoping if there are any queries, uh, we can answer towards the end. Uh, but even before we reach that, I just want to uh, cover some of the white papers that we have and some of the other stuff that we do have. I do want to highlight that, you know, whatever Dave presented uh, in terms of some of the things that we do plan to do uh, for the future, other for information, only they are subject to change. So I just wanted to make that very clear uh, because uh, <clears throat> things are subject to change. And our real focus is really on you know innovating the product, uh, keeping the customer always uh, first in mind. So from that perspective, you know we try to see you know what is the market trend, what is important, you know so that uh, you know something that. You know, to keep up with market trends, say for instance, in form of mobility, you know, mobility trend is a very important one. So that's where you know we're trying to see if the iPad interface would add value, and then uh, you know the modernization of some of the tools uh, that Dave mentioned about. And there are several other things also being explored. So you know uh, that's why I just want to emphasize that it is a lot of these are subject to change, and we really want to see and prioritize on the features that truly deliver value for our customers and you know so that these applications help you differentiate uh, in the marketplace uh, uh, you are in okay thanks so with that I'll move on to my next section uh, uh, next section which is with this white papers and the video yeah so I want to highlight uh, some of the recent white papers uh, that has been put together and some of the white papers that have been uh, refreshed. Uh, so we have this new recent white paper, you know, which is basically developing uh, ICE applications uh, for the mobile devices. Uh, it illustrates a number of uh, examples uh, which we hope you will find it really useful. It gives some cool suggestions. It talks about a number of examples using the jQuery, uh, Ajax, and the JSON. Uh, as I said, you know, mobility is a key trend. A uh, number of our customers are trying to see, you know, how can they go beyond, uh, you know, just a web on a desktop, you know, how can I access it on a uh, mobile. So this white paper gives some kind of uh, uh, insights with some uh, examples uh, out there. And then we have a number of white papers refreshed as well, uh, configuring the graphical interface uh, for Biz. Uh, and then we have the other white paper which is integrate clear path environments with a wide range of heterogeneous applications and databases and then we have the biz you know using the stored uh, proce stored procedures and then another white paper on you know turning clear path MCP data into information uh, with this um, so all these are available on the unisys.com uh, website so please do uh, check them out uh, to see you know some of the new content added there I also would like to highlight that in our in our unisys.com website uh, we have the new uh, software release announcement uh, document posted, uh, which you know uh, the software release announcement, which we call the SRA, highlights the new features, uh, some of the ordering procedures, the styles, and stuff like that. Uh, so please do check it out. Uh, there is a new data sheet as well uh, for the Biz uh, Wars 2200. Uh, again, that's available on the Unisys.com uh, website. So please do uh, check that as well. So here it provides uh, the links to the white papers uh, that we discussed above so that it is easy for you to uh, click and find them out there. We also have a very good video on the this. Uh, again, this is something uh, we find uh, for somebody who wants to start and get to know about this. Uh, this provides a very good uh, start, uh, particularly for uh, you know, executives or senior uh, management team who want to understand uh, crisply what this is about and what it can bring into the table. So uh, we encourage you to you know look into this video. It's available on the YouTube as well. 
uh, please forward it and share it with your colleagues and uh, the more you feel uh, uh, they might help with this particular video as well. With that, uh, we pretty much come towards the end of this presentation. Um, so please do reach out to us for any queries. Uh, as highlighted earlier, you know, uh, a large part of the new release content came from you based on the new feature suggestions. So please do reach out to us. Uh, and you can always reach out to me uh, and you all, um, to Mike and Ravi as well. Our email IDs and numbers are there. So please do reach out to us. And in the unisys.com website, uh, there is a this email uh, ID as well posted there, uh, which is basically this at unisys.com. So you may also reach out uh, on that email ID as well and uh, for any queries you have related to this and we will uh, get back to you on that. With that, we come to the end of the uh, session uh, and uh, maybe we can answer uh, uh, any queries uh, that you might have. Matt? Excellent. Thank you, Thanga. And uh, again, that does bring us to the Q&A portion of the presentation. Uh, again, if you do have any questions for our presenters, uh, please send those across using the question box on the right side of your control panel there. Um, again, uh, if we don't get to all of your questions today during the, the live event, we will follow up with you directly via email. Uh, so again, please uh, send those send those across. Uh, with that, uh, I believe we've got a couple that have come through already. Um, let's go ahead and get started with those. Uh, first question I have is, will there be a biz version for the iPad or Android system? Uh, so at this moment, it is in a prototype stage. Uh, we, are, we do already have some iPad-based prototype build. Uh, and this was demonstrated in the universe conference last year and in the symposium we had in Roseville as well last year. We are also trying to evaluate, you know, how can we take uh, it to a much broader mobile platform. So that is something we are trying to uh, innovate and see how we could do that. Uh, so this is a work in progress and, uh, you know, we'll, we hope to keep you posted on that. But iPad prototype is something that was ready and we have already demonstrated uh, in some of our conferences. But, but Sang, I'd like to add one one caveat to that: that this is not Biz running on that device. They are a the, those devices are terminals accessing a host system, either an open systems or a twenty two hundred environment. Yeah, absolutely, you're, you're right, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, so it's basically it leverages largely the ICE uh, component. Um, so it's more or less more or less like a client device. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, thank you for sending that question across. Uh, again, we do have uh, some more time here if you have other questions uh, for our presenters. I know we're getting a, a number of questions that are similar in nature as far as getting a copy of the presentation. Uh, again, the, the presentation was recorded today, so that will be made available on the Unisys website. And uh, I also believe that we will have a PDF version uh, of the slide deck available there for download as well. Um, see it, other questions coming across. Uh, looks like Cal is being rewritten. Will old Cal statements need modifications for the new Cal? And again, Dave or Thanga, did you want to take that one? Um, yeah, this is Mike. Um, there are, with the new Cal, what we've done uh, is to write it such that it tokenizes the equations instead of reevaluating the equation with each line that we act and uh, access in the report. Consequently, we now verify that all the equations are correct. So that if you had a, an equation that you never got to, even though it was was there and you never got to it in the previous version, it would uh, not show you that it erred. Uh, and if now it will tell you that it errors. But we've also said that, well, we, we realize we don't want to break current applications. So we've implemented a compatibility flag that when you set that compatibility flag, it will run as the old environment in that respect and not give you the answer or not give you the error 
at that time until it is actually executed. I, thank I, you, Mike. Go ahead. No, that, that's fine. Then uh, again, uh, if we need to go into uh, a, a more detailed explanation, uh, we we can follow up uh, on that question by email. Um, with that, I, I believe that's going to be all the questions that uh, that we have for our presenters today. Uh, again, if, if uh, you still have some additional questions before we end the event, you can send those across, and we will follow up with you directly. Um, with that, I'd like to just uh, put it back to Dave or Thanga for any closing statements that you have for our audience today. Sure. No, I just want to thank. For attending. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much for attending this session, and uh, we look forward to see how we can, you know, continue to innovatively evolve and, uh, you know, support our customers. Fantastic, uh, and, and thank you, uh, Thanga and Dave, for another fantastic presentation. That does conclude today's event. The recorded version of today's webinar will be made available for download on the Unisys website. And as you exit the webinar, please be sure to fill out a brief survey and give us your feedback. Again, I would like to thank everyone for attending, and have a great day.